So hello, today we have Rebecca, who is a first year medical student at the University of Bristol. Hello, Rebecca. Hi, Amber. Hi. Thank you so much for um, giving up some time today. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. So if we just get started by um, talking about what you've been up to before starting medicine. So I think my academic background before medicine is probably what you would say is something more non-traditional. So mm -hmm. I did economics, politics, and international studies. It's quite a mouthful. Yeah. Um, at the University of Warwick. So essentially, it's a non-science background is what I came mm -hmm. from. And um, I was actually, I'd actually taken a year out after graduation to work a little mm -hmm. bit in like a related field um, because I was on track to, to joining um, a master's in health economics at UCL. I was supposed mm -hmm. to start in 2020, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but then some, somewhere along the year, I just decided, you know, I, I, I don't really think that this is something for me. And mm -hmm. I, medicine had always been something that I've considered, but mm -hmm. I never really applied for. And so I was like, if I don't try, I'll never know. Mm -hmm. And so I applied and lo and behold, here I am. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think, I think um, maybe a lot of people might find that transition quite difficult. And I definitely mm -hmm. understand it because it definitely gave me a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. initially, yeah. Mm -hmm. About kind of switching into a field that you were, weren't so familiar with. Yeah, it felt like starting mm -hmm. over. I think for people that have some kind of science background, it, you can see it as like an extension of your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Whereas for like someone from humanities, it's like, oh, so you're just gonna disregard everything that you've studied then. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of pressure comes from like the people around you more so than the voice inside of your head. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay, okay. So the when you took a year out after your degree, was that related to economics, your work experience? Yes, so mm -hmm. I did, um, I was working in a healthcare consulting firm. We mm -hmm. were working on white papers essentially to inform public health policy. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was as close as what I wanted to do as possible. And so when I realized that I didn't like it, I was like, okay, there's not really anywhere else I can go in this mm -hmm. industry then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would make me like start from the drawing board, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's kind of, it's got the word healthcare in there, but do, mm -hmm. do you not find that you look to issues that are really relevant to being, you know, being a doctor and working in healthcare? Did you kind of look into policies and um, I suppose discuss issues that you find are relevant and bring in knowledge that, that you have learnt? I did. I think I think one of the biggest like differences that I notice is that mm -hmm. in in healthcare it's very immediate. Like you're very it's very outcome based, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you have someone come in, you want to make sure that they get in and out with as few um, as quickly as possible or as best mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you bring the whole business model into it and you look at it from a public health perspective it starts to become less about the individual patient and more about, okay, how can we reduce our numbers? How can we mm -hmm. um, make the profit margin more um, mm -hmm. beneficial, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that, I mean, as much as running a hospital is like an amalgamation of those two, I found it really hard starting at the bottom to sort of reconcile those because I feel like you only see parts of the picture when you start, yeah, when you first start out, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. yeah I suppose and I think especially at Bristol we do a lot on the kind of the whole person model and focusing on the individual and their whole life world and I suppose your experience then from a more public health point of view uh, shows a really different perspective than that um, but it's important because in the like the tutorials with um, focusing on like the stats and the epidemiology did you find that you could really showcase some of your experience in there? I found I found it quite difficult actually. I might have found it more difficult than I would mm -hmm. have if I had started out on a clean slate. Mm -hmm. I think because because after sort of being not forced to read, but after mm -hmm. being made to read, you know, all these mm -hmm. all these different um, articles, there's just sort of like a preconceived notion, I guess, of mm -hmm. how some statistics are. 
And so it becomes more difficult to even accept teachings at face value, um, mm -hmm. which of course, you know, motivates you to have to read more on your own, which mm -hmm. in a way gave me more work to do. So I yeah. feel like it would have just been easier if I just started out not knowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we've talked about before with um, science grads, you know, you come in with a little bit of knowledge and it makes you realise that actually what you're being taught is only part of the picture, which is what you need to know at that moment. But because you know there's a bit more to it, you then spend more time going that bit deeper, <laughs> researching a bit more, trying to understand and I suppose connect yeah, your knowledge. Really yeah, yeah, because you're yeah. trying to tie up what your experience and your knowledge is with the new information you're being yeah. taught yeah so it opens up like a whole I different world I'm telling myself though that yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> I am telling myself though that at the end of the day like maybe at the end of five years mm -hmm. it will be hopefully beneficial at the mm -hmm. end of it because I feel like even if you even if the content that you learn is very different I feel like it teaches mm -hmm. you a different way of thinking and just in general mm -hmm. when you like enter medicine at like a later age you do pick up a few skills that are transferable at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll have some analysis skills some critical thinking. Yeah. Um, and I think just that different like perspective coming in, having looked at things from, from a different way will, you know, it's bound to be, bound to be valuable. Yeah. So what's going back kind of to I suppose, more the beginning for A-levels, did you do any science subjects at A-level? I did, but I did IB, like the International okay. Baccarat. I think they have it in the UK here as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um, I did like biology, chemistry, and math. Mm -hmm. um, it was a pretty suicidal combination, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, so I had some kind of a science background, but I feel like after, what was it, five years mm -hmm. of, of, yeah, since taking the IB, it it feels very much like I'm learning everything for the first time, which mm -hmm. I think, I know it sounds bad, but I feel like it keeps things interesting because mm -hmm. it's like, it's sort of, it's less of a refresher course and more like, oh, I, I, I forgot that this was, this is how things worked. And mm -hmm. yeah, that, that keeps it interesting. Yeah. And where did you sit your IB when you were studying? So I did the IB in Singapore. Nice. Okay. Where I did, yeah. Where did my uh, O-levels or GCSEs mm -hmm. as well? GCSEs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, okay. So you had um, education over there and then came to Warwick um, for your first undergrad. Nice. Okay. So thinking of the application to medicine, I suppose um, I was kind of thinking about the requirements that you need. So your IB was enough to meet the requirements for the application. Um, and then you could just apply to, to undergrads through that or? Uh, yeah. So um, I think because I was a non-science graduate, there were only a handful of unis that I could apply to. So that narrowed it down by a few. And then um, based on those unis, I think um, a lot of them have requirements like you need to get a two one and above um, in your undergrad. And so that also narrows things down a bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So what was your approach when, so you've narrowed them down um, and then did you apply to a mixture of graduate and undergraduates? I, I, I applied to all undergraduates actually, although in hindsight, maybe I should have applied to at least one grad school. Mm -hmm. um, my reasoning was that grad school is so much more competitive because I'll be competing with, you know, people with PhDs, people who have, you know, entire careers behind them. Like, who am I? You know, I just, I barely have any work experience. I only have a bachelor's. So I, because of that, I decided to only stick to undergrads. Um, but yeah, in hindsight, I definitely would have given at least one grad school a chance. Mm -hmm. With only four options, it <laughs> it's so hard to pick. Um, yeah, and you're just kind of, I suppose you've got to work a bit strategically. Did you, um, for like, entrance exams, had you didn't, like, did you just do the UCAT or did you have a mixture? I did. I just did the UCAT. It was actually mm -hmm. quite last minute. Um, I think I sat it in September. And I, mm -hmm. and I started studying for it in June or July because, um, like I said, it was, it was quite a last minute decision really mm -hmm. to, to apply to medicine. Um, and yeah, so I was aware of the other exams like the BMAT um, mm -hmm. for Imperial or UCL and other things. But at the time I, I was just focused on uh, UCAT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah take that kind of I suppose one yeah. element yeah do exactly. that and then see yeah. yeah um and thinking about your decision had you had any experience in healthcare at all or how did you I suppose prepare yourself to come to the decision to to apply um so I think my idea of like what medicine or at least what being a clinician was um was based a lot on sort of the volunteer work that I did Mm -hmm. because um I worked with my church when I was a lot younger Mm -hmm. and so um and then I I worked with the Singapore Red Cross for a while Mm -hmm. um and then so generally in like different um volunteer environment so it was really good that we got to see like different um slices of the population so to speak Mm -hmm. um because at the end of the day I feel like if you're in medicine you are technically working in um in customer service or like public health you know Mm -hmm. because all aspects of the public Mm -hmm. so I think the biggest takeaway that I got was okay this is the kind of um these are the people that you'll be seeing every day and Mm -hmm. I think that was the biggest um yeah, sort of realization when it came to mm-hmm. medicine. Um, and in terms of the sort of the academic, like the heavy, the heavyweight stuff, so mm-hmm. to speak, um, my mom is a radiologist. So yeah. I got, I'm very privileged in that sense that I got mm-hmm. to, got to get some like um, insight uh, in mm-hmm. that sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. So did you do any kind of like shadowing? Did you get to go in and, and see her work? I did. Yeah. Um, I think when I was when I was really young, I would follow mm-hmm. my mom to work on bring your daughter to to work. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but because I feel like radiology is very is for a very specific type of person, and maybe not necessarily mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Um, um, just to you know give you an idea, it was like a dark room, and and you see maybe like uh, mm-hmm. very few patients a day. Um, and so when I saw that, I thought that oh that that's just what medicine is, and so. Mm-hmm it never really made the connection for me that that's what I want to do you know yeah, yeah. okay interesting because I was going to say your experiences seem to have come quite you know earlier on in your life so mm. the kind of to follow a different path and then move to medicine um <laughs> I suppose is a, a little more unusual but that makes sense if you hadn't connected the experience you'd had with yeah, what medicine was yeah okay and how have you found the course to be so far is it living up to those expectations in terms of what you're expecting I feel like I really didn't know what to expect because Mm -hmm. everyone sort of gave me a different idea of what it was Mm -hmm. some people were saying that oh it's gonna be just the best year some some were like oh you're just gonna you're gonna feel awful towards the end you're gonna wonder why you did it Mm -hmm. and I think when I was when I was um like before I came for my first year I was shadowing um a gastroenterologist Mm-hmm. And his entire team told me, you know, if you're going to do medicine, maybe you should consider doing dentistry instead. And so that was, yeah, it's, it's mm-hmm. a little bit off-putting knowing that the people that uh, are in the field are telling you not to do it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, okay. But uh, yeah, we power it through. So here we are. <laughs> yeah. And I suppose from the sounds of it, of a lot of your experiences, it's the more people-facing aspects that you are motivated by, you enjoy, so perhaps it's the clinical um, placements and experiences that you'll start to, I suppose, really enjoy or get to showcase those things. Yeah, definitely. I think I, I, I'm not sure what to expect when it comes to um, the actual behind the scenes, because mm-hmm. I feel like when you, when you sort of shadow doctors or you, even if you watch like the GPs on, mm-hmm. on placement, everything comes very naturally to them. Mm-hmm. But then when you when it comes down to learning the nitty gritty, it's like you don't realize how many steps there are and how everything is very mm-hmm. systematic. And learning mm-hmm. that has been like very, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really hard and just without practice. You, know, you can look at it and you can you know, think about it and you can practice little bits. But until you do it for yourself, it's it's really hard to put in place. I think there's so many things to mm-hmm. think about and you have so little experience to pin to those processes. Yeah. yeah but um so obviously the course has been quite different because it's been uh coronavirus so um have you had you know any what have your experiences of kind of placement been so far um so in my year we did we did um online placements we have mm-hmm. primary and secondary care mm-hmm. but both of them have been online mm-hmm. which um for the most part I feel like it's just as 
educational in the mm -hmm. sense that you still get to see the patient interaction. You still get to see, you know, the doctors perform um, certain physical exams. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that I would say was maybe when I realized, okay, maybe Zoom University isn't as good as uh, in real life, mm -hmm. is when we were in secondary care and they were teaching us how to palpate certain organs. Yeah. And yeah, and they told us um, that we had to, because we were online, that we had to do it to ourselves, which I think is a bit different when it mm -hmm. comes to doing it to someone else. Um, yeah, but aside from that, I think it's been it's been quite educational still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did some where we did a cardiovascular exam on a pillow. So obviously <laughs> it's good to practice those steps and get, you know, the yeah, get the steps in, but to actually um, get used to what things sound yeah. like. Uh, I think there was at one a, point they asked us to use like um, an empty toilet roll as a patient okay. in order. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, I suppose. I mean, it you works. can't, you know, yeah, you have to give credit for the um, adaptation and, so, yeah. you know, everyone's just kind of working with what they've got. Because yeah. um, if you, um, in 30, you usually do HCA shifts, don't you? Mm -hmm. Have you got had them move to the end of the year at all or have you had any of them? We haven't had any yet, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I think, though, a few people have had their tutorials. So they've maybe okay. picked up their, their shirts, been given, like, the introductory mm -hmm. lecture. Um, mine is next week. Okay. Um, but as for the shifts themselves, like the 12-hour the ones, I'm not actually mm -hmm. sure when we'll be assigned those. Yeah, but things are a bit different this year. So I don't think yeah. anyone really knows what to expect. Yeah, and I think the guidance keeps changing and the yeah. situation keeps changing. So, yeah, it's hard to keep up with. Um, how has it been generally moving to a new city? Did you know Bristol very much before you came here? I don't actually know if I've been to Bristol before. I know um, my my grandmother lives in Bath. And so mm -hmm. when I was younger, my family would take trips to the UK. And so we'd explore mm -hmm. like different UK cities. But I don't actually know if we've been to Bristol mm -hmm. yeah, which is interesting because it's a, quite a big city and it's quite a lot mm -hmm. to see um so one of the one of the main things that I was focused on when it came to like um geographical location that mm -hmm. I didn't really want to study somewhere that I had been um when I studied in Warwick mm -hmm. so Warwick is sort of like in the Coventry Birmingham area mm -hmm. Birmingham is a really good like it's a really big medical school as, mm -hmm. as well so for me, at the end of the day, it was between Birmingham and Bristol, and I mm -hmm. wanted to choose somewhere that I never lived before. So, yeah, mm -hmm. here we are. Yeah, no, it is a it's a, a really good city. Hopefully, over the next few years, you'll be able to explore a little bit more of it in there. Uh, so, outside of uh, you know studying and medicine, um, are there any particular extracurriculars or activities that um, you're involved in? Um, so in undergrad, I started out doing some uh, weightlifting with the Barbell Society at Warwick. And then when I started here at uh, Bristol, there Bristol also has like a, a weightlifting or a lifting mm -hmm. society for more general um, lifting sports. Mm -hmm. And um, when I saw that they had a position open for treasurer, I was like, I have an econ background. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'll marry the mm -hmm. two interests. So yeah, that's what that's what I do um, at Bristol. Um, and then I'm also in the uh, Mature Medics Sub Society for the medical. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and when things sort of open up a bit, I plan to do some more volunteering just to see if there are any soup mm -hmm. kitchens that need help or mm -hmm. any um, yeah, tutoring shelters or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, when I used to go back to Singapore in the summers, I would volunteer at a um, children's shelter, sort of like mm -hmm. give tuition to kids who maybe couldn't afford like a tutor mm -hmm. um so yeah if they have that here then maybe I would explore that as well yeah that sounds amazing um have you been involved in kind of much teaching or tutoring within the med school at all I know there's quite a lot of peer-to-peer -peer, um, um I don't know about on. teaching but um recently uh I'll be one of the peer mentors I think for yeah, okay. the incoming 2021 okay uh, students I'm not yet mm -hmm. sure what the uh the job scope will be because they have mm -hmm. but yeah that's something that I'm looking forward to yeah okay so is that for medics specifically or mature students um they haven't I think that depends on which mm -hmm. group of first years they sort of um mm -hmm. like hand you um mm -hmm. but for the most part I think it's generally for the university mm -hmm. so in general they tend to link you up with people in the same course 
So that very well, very well might be the case that will be other mm-hmm. products. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, lots of exciting things uh, yeah. to look forward to in next year. Now, have yes. you been able to do much training with the, the lifting team or I suppose? We actually have not met face to face. Yeah, we okay. Started. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, it's been a bit it's been a bit crazy in the sense that we haven't met because, well, on top of not meeting, like all the gyms have also been closed. Mm-hmm. I think they only opened a few days ago, like on Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually have not been, but uh, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. We should probably change that. Yeah. yeah. And like lifting is something that's quite hard to do at home. You know, weights are really expensive mm-hmm. and yeah, you, it's hard to get hold of things that heavy. Think, yeah, definitely. I think one mm-hmm. of the blessings like one of the few blessings that have come with mm-hmm. lockdown is that anyone who you know maybe wanted to start out um with any kind of physical exercise they might feel more mm-hmm. comfortable too because mm-hmm. everyone is almost on the same level now no one's been training for the last mm-hmm. five four months so mm-hmm. maybe they might feel more comfortable um going to the gym mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's a yeah hopefully they do do you have um i suppose if you thought about how to encourage people to get involved after you know, a year of people being really quite isolated from each other mm-hmm. starting university? I think one of, I think that's interesting because I feel like on the one hand, you have a group of people who maybe because they've been cooped up for so long that mm-hmm. they probably would, you know, be very um, forthcoming with mm-hmm. whatever societies that they're joining because mm-hmm. they just sort of want to get in on that action. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the people who feel more shy about that, I think that's also quite natural coming into uni for the first time. If anything, mm-hmm. you might have like a larger group of people falling into that, that category because there might be a number of second years next year that maybe mm-hmm. you know, aren't very familiar with Bristol because they haven't mm-hmm. physically been here. And so, yeah, I think that would be an interesting challenge to see. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so thinking about uh, the year you've had and has obviously been quite unusual. Have you got any kind of top tips that you've learned from the year or what have you kind of taken away from it that's been your biggest learning point? Biggest learning point? Um, I think medicine is very, well, in terms of like the course, I think mm-hmm. medicine, when I went to it, I thought that it would be very science-based. Mm-hmm. But maybe it is just the nature of our course, but it does tend to be very artsy as well. I was up late last night because I was writing haikus for the yeah. um, <laughs> the effective yeah. consulting project, yeah. you know, which I didn't think I would be doing in, in a degree like this. Mm-hmm. And then I think a month ago, we came up with public health flyers or leaflets. Mm-hmm. So that was really interesting as well, because it, it doesn't feel as um, monotonous in that sense, because there are um, yeah, ways that you can sort of get creative and like show your mm-hmm. personality through projects and things, which is something I didn't expect. So mm, yeah, I think it also helps people be open-minded and see medicine from different perspectives. You know, it's not just about the disease and the illness, it's how you communicate that. It's how it feels from a patient perspective. Yeah. It's, you know, it's all those different things. So I was really surprised. Um, perhaps a little reluctant at first but actually um yeah I think if you give those different elements some some thought and some time they're really valuable I suppose it brings in some of your background as well from different perspectives thinking do you think or no I don't think I've never been very creative so no, I don't okay. know if I can speak on that but mm-hmm. I think that like um because medicine is very factual at least from what I've seen mm-hmm. there either is an answer or there isn't um, mm-hmm. And that's pretty like easy to ascertain. Whereas I feel like in other subjects, especially if you come from like maybe English lit or politics, mm-hmm. the answer is always let's have a discussion. You know, mm-hmm. let's let's see where our mm-hmm. opinions sit, and then um, we can come to sort of a compromise on that. Um, so that that was quite a big transition, I think. Mm-hmm. And so having like these creative outlets, I think it it sort of helps to marry mm-hmm. the two. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Bristol, I feel like they emphasize a lot that medicine is an art and a science. Mm-hmm. And so I, I feel like it's difficult to understand what that means until like you're actually in it and you see the two mm-hmm. sort of contrasted against each other. Yeah. Yeah. And how have you found the, um, just to add another question, how do you find the teaching styles have been like suited to your style of learning of the, you know, let's have a discussion. Um, I suppose, you, you know, the, 
biology based content is quite factual, but we do have CBL and we do have kind of spaces to, to talk about things. Have you felt like, yeah, how has that been for you? Um, well, in terms of the CBL, it's, mm -hmm. it's mainly been sort of students leading other students. So mm -hmm. um, it, it is quite interesting to see what other people um, prioritize or like when they look at a, a problem, what the first thing that comes to their mind is. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that sense, it can be quite, um, yeah, it, it can be quite, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, eye-opening. Okay, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think yeah. because, you know, you might notice like an age difference at first, um, especially because, you know, some of these, most of these people, they come out straight out of A-levels, mm -hmm. which, you know, if you think back to where you were, maybe, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago, you mm -hmm. probably are a very different person. Mm -hmm. um, but then when it comes down to handling issues, I feel like, or handling like the CBL cases, Mm -hmm. I feel like age is not really an indicator of what someone can contribute to that conversation, mm -hmm. which has been very helpful in like bridging that age gap because it doesn't feel as substantial or as significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think I definitely found a similar thing where, yeah, talking about the content, discussing issues in the um, CBL tutorials. Yeah, you couldn't tell you know, what background people had come from usually unless they had a specific scenario to pull in. Um, it was only really talking about what people got up to in their evenings and staying out late. Yeah, I think that's where uh, the difference showed, but yeah, content wise or, you know, discussion wise, yeah. everyone's super switched on. Um, and yeah. it's a really productive environment, I feel. Um, yeah, so just to finish up thinking about uh, future specialities, which obviously, you know, not expecting you to know what you want to do, but thinking about how, you know, you perhaps radiology isn't for you. Um, you seem to be very kind of people focused and like to work with people. So has that influenced the type of specialities that you're considering? Um, I feel like, I, I don't know if I would put all my eggs in one mm -hmm. basket because I, there's mm -hmm. so much that I don't know. Um, but I think at the very least, um, I know what I don't want to do. And so that, that can be quite helpful as well. Mm -hmm. um, when you mentioned something quite people oriented, I think I would probably lean towards something where I would get to, you know, speak to either the patient or their family mm -hmm. and less so, yeah, less so maybe something like radiology where you mm -hmm. um, are focused more on like the looking at the patient's diagnosis and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose we've got lots of placement coming up, so you can you could try it. And I think yeah, m the most specialties tend to have a fair amount of patient contact in yeah. different, um, so there'll be lots to choose from. Yeah, I yeah. think that one of the more difficult, um, one of the more difficult challenges in choosing a specialty is sort of balancing how much you want something versus how competitive you, you mm -hmm. seem to be. Um, because I mean, it's competitive for a reason, usually. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like um, when you're that eager to just want to start learning, it feels mm -hmm. a bit like painful to sort of waste time just sort of applying over and over. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, and I think if you do have a, you know, an interest leading up, you know, throughout your years at medical school, there's loads of stuff you can do to kind of prepare and make yourself a competitive applicant. Um, you know opportunities out there to get experience and um and yeah show that you have an interest so but it's quite hard you have to think about them I suppose fairly early and while you're still considering different options um but there's a long there's a long time <laughs> because you know it's after foundation isn't it that you'll start to think exactly. about them yeah I think my personal or at least per the personal tutors that the uni gives us can be quite helpful in that sense so mm -hmm. even if you don't exactly, you know, um, want to do the specialty that they're in, mm -hmm. they're able to, you know, speak to colleagues that are in those specialties you're interested mm -hmm. in and sort of get an idea of what you can do to make your application more competitive, like you said. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's been really helpful. Yeah. And even just find out if it, you know, if you are, you are interested. Um, yeah, if you're suited to it or something. Yeah. 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 I found the people that have reached out to try and find out more. It's genuinely been really well received. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile doing if you want to explore 
uh, different usual contacts explore those different specialities <laughs> yeah. yeah perfect well thank you so much for uh spending your time today to you know share your background and um share your experiences with medicine it's been um really valuable hearing um hearing about it so thank, thank you very you. much thanks for uh, taking yeah. the time as well to sit down and have a chat so that's been nice perfect um well yeah enjoy yeah hope the rest of first year goes well and moving into a bit more varied second year a bit more people contact and a bit more weightlifting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you very much thank you